Hi, my name is Terrell Givens. I'm a senior uh, Neil A. Maxwell Research Fellow here at the Maxwell Institute. I've been here for five years. Uh, I taught as a professor of literature and religion for 32 years at the University of Richmond and uh, just made the, the switch here five years ago. Happy to be here. Well, I like to think that disciple scholarship are, uh, well, disciples and scholars are, are two names for what should be a, a kindred activity, I would, I would like to think. Uh, a disciple is somebody who follows a master and asks good questions. And a scholar is somebody who asks good questions and follows them wherever they, they take him, just as a disciple does. And so I, I'd like to think that the restoration began because uh, a young boy named Joseph Smith asked really tough questions and they took him to very unanticipated places. And I think in the same way a, a good disciple scholar asks tough questions. He asks genuine questions, which means they're questions that expose him to risk because we don't always know what the answers are going to look like. But if you have a faith commitment, then you can be confident that we'll never uh, never be asked to believe anything that isn't true and that uh, all truth is part of the gospel. Joseph Smith said Mormonism is truth. And so I don't think there are any questions that are, that are off limits if we ask them in good faith and with good effort. A good example of a disciple scholar, uh, in my experience, was Hugh Nibley. I came of age at a time when he was uh, a pretty major figure uh, and a huge influence in the lives of a lot of Latter-day Saints. Uh, even if you couldn't always follow his research and uh, his sometimes very arcane uh, compilations of evidence, one had a certain confidence because it was obvious that this was a man of immense learning. And he was a man whose learning always added to and reinforced rather than call into question his basic faith commitments. And so the sheer power of his example uh, inspired me to believe that a life of scholarship could also, uh, in a kindred way, uh, reinforce and affirm my own faith commitments. Well, I think the reason why disciple scholarship is, uh, is so badly needed today is because we have lost, I think, our sense that, that the greatest truths with which we should be concerned are truths that exist outside of and independently of our own tastes and preferences and, and passing desires or needs. Uh, disciple scholarship is rooted in the sense that there is something greater and truer that exists outside of the self and that it takes a certain amount of sacrifice and discipline to, uh, to come close to understanding and appreciating those truths. And uh, I, I don't think uh, there's ever been a time in our culture or society's history when, when there's been a, a greater need for the affirmation that uh, the truth is worth pursuing. The reason why Elder Maxwell was such a great influence in the church, uh, in, in my life personally, was because he always operated with this kind of sublime confidence that there wasn't much of a difference between the life of, of the true scholar and the life of the true disciple. It's not as if one had to find a way to blend those two pursuits in one's life. One naturally leads to the other. Uh, a good disciple wants to honor God by pursuing that which is true and beautiful. And uh, a true scholar uh, submits himself to uh, a kind of recognition that there is a truth worth pursuing outside of the self. And so it seems to me that, that Neil A. Maxwell was one of the best examples we have of the, the interconnection, the indissolubility, really of discipleship and scholarship. My advice to anybody watching this video who's inclined to, to be interested in the kinds of things that the Neil A. Maxwell Institute does would be to, uh, to keep learning how to ask good questions. Um, you know, a lot of things are attributed to Einstein that he, he might not really have said, but he's reputed to have said at one point, I'm not really that much smaller, smarter than all my colleagues. Uh, it's just that I stay with the questions longer. And uh, I think there's something to be said for a long-term, dedicated pursuit of a really good question.